This is an overview of Krakatoa as a true inside of Autodesk Maya. Let's first take a look at the loading of particle files. The Krakatoa SI integration with Maya now has a dedicated PRT load object just like the Krakatoa MX one in 3ds Max. We can change the number of particles displayed in the viewport, we can change the type of the display between large and small dots, lines and so on. We can load the first 10 particles or a fraction of the particles. The first 10 particles load faster and uh, every end particle mode is a little bit slower because it has to read through the complete file, but it gives a better cross section of the particle cloud. We can also render these particles. These are 2 million particles rendered with the integrated renderer. This is not being exported to Python anymore. The Krakatoa for Maya is now a plugin renderer, which uses a scene interface to communicate directly with the scene. Let's enable motion blur and try to render the same image with four passes motion blur without randomizing the particle positions. This will calculate four passes, but we'll see that there are some steps in the motion blur. So we can enable the jitter motion blur option. This will randomize the positions of the particles along the velocity vectors and the result will be much smoother. We'll still render only four passes of motion blur, but the final result will be more diffuse. Now let's take a look at the ability of the PRT loader to display a separate proxy sequence in the viewport. In this scene, we have a PRT loader showing particles saved from a NIAD simulation. This is only 1% of the final particle count, but we're not loading 1% from the original sequence. We have specified a separate file sequence which contains the 1% of the particles and we have set it to be loaded in the viewport. Currently, it's also set to be used by the renderer but uh, this count is not going to be nearly enough to render inside of Krakatoa. If we go to a frame like 140 and render 1K frame, we'll see that there are just not enough particles. We can go to frame 180 and render again, and we have the same problem. We can solve this problem easily by first reducing the final pass density and then enabling the second original particle sequence to be used by the renderer only. At this point, we are loading nearly 10 million particles for rendering. And once they are sorted and lit and drawn, we have a very solid looking fluid body. Another feature of Krakatoa SA2 inside of Autodesk Maya is the PAT volume object. Just like in Krakatoa MX inside of 3ds Max, the PRT volume in Maya can turn a mesh into a point cloud. We can pick the mesh as the source for our PRT volume and the mesh will be converted to a level set and each voxel of the level set will get one or more particles. Right now we're creating a grid of one particle for each voxel. We can change the display options like the size of the dots, the amount of uh, particles, the viewport spacing, and so on. Additionally, each voxel can be subdivided multiple times in order to produce sub-voxels with their own particles, but by default this option is disabled in the viewport. When we allow the display of the subdivisions in the viewport, we can see a lot more particles are being generated. There is always a chance that too many particles might be generated, so there is an option to limit the maximum number of particles being shown in the viewport. We can enable the viewport particle limit and then change the number of particles. This is expressed as thousands of particles, so 21,000 is right now allowed. If we enable the uh, surface shell option and also jitter the particles, 
we can produce a thin layer of particles close to the surface and we can also offset the beginning of the shell from the surface. Positive values move inwards inside the volume so we can create even an animated effect of a volume growing from inside out. If we disable the surface shell option, we are filling the complete volume with particles. The particles right now are jittered and one subdivision is applied. And at render time, we'll be using a spacing of one instead of two. So if we open the character renderer and tweak a little bit the uh, final pass density settings, because we have so many particles, we can render This will give us approximately 5.6 million particles and once they are generated procedurally inside the volume and then lit and drawn, we're going to get a relatively solid looking version of the mesh represented as volumetric particles. We can disable the subdivisions that means we'll create only one particle per voxel. The rendering will be faster, but our volume will also be uh, not as dense. And we can start seeing some artifacting from the grid. Let's enable the surface shell and also jitter the particles in order to randomize their positions and remove the grid raster. At this point, we can re-enable the subdivisions and we'll produce eight times more particles in each voxel. This gives us a more solid looking statue, but this is still a very thin layer of particles close to the surface. We can tweak independently the density for the camera pass and for the lighting pass. And in this case, still using the shell, but with higher density of the uh, camera pass, we are going to see a much more solid looking object. If we disable the shell, once again 5.6 million particles will be generated on the fly and passed to the renderer and this will give us the complete volume made of particles. Let's let some more light go through the volume by decreasing the lighting pass density. The particles are loaded and lit again and now we have more light penetrating the volume. Another thing that we could try is switching the shading mode from the current isotropic where all the light is scattered in all possible directions to a funk surface shading mode. The PRT volume generates correct normals for each particle from the surface normals of the mesh. So if we switch uh, our PRT volume to a surface shell, we are producing only 700,000 particles, which is enough to approximate a surface rendering um, look similar to other renderers. Normally, we're producing 5.6 million from the complete volume. But for the funk shading, we are more interested in the surface than the whole volume. Now let's switch back to isotropic and take a look at the voxel rendering mode. In voxel rendering mode, instead of using points to represent the particles, we're using a grid and filling it with densities based on the particle cloud. So if we switch to voxel mode and render, we're going to get relatively similar result. We can tweak the density in order to produce deeper shadows. And we can also uh, reduce the amount of noise by disabling the uh, random jitter since the PRT volume is producing a grid of particles and we are rendering a, a grid of voxels. It's a good idea not to use jitter when rendering in voxel mode. As you can see, Krikato SR is now fully integrated inside of Autodesk Maya and can be operated directly to the familiar user interface inside the render settings window and the render view 
and it provides similar objects to the CryptoMX version for creating particles and loading particles from disk.